Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Forkmaster, and welcome back to another Game Theory Reaction! And... what the heck is Slurp Juice? And, okay, this is obviously talking about Fortnite. I'm gonna be completely honest here, never really put that much thought into it. I mean, you drink it, you gain, like, a shield, it's glowing blue, I just always assumed it was, like, uh, monster energies, even more radioactive, like, inbred cousin or something like that. I mean, I've I've made it no secret, I don't play Fortnite. I've played Fortnite like twice, and one of those times you can see on my channel, I'll see if I remember to put like the video card in the, in the corner. But anyways, it was a while ago. It was when building was still like the default in uh, Fortnite. And yeah, it was not that, not that quite into it. It, it's just, it's one of those things where it's just not my, like, play style. It, it's like, you know, nothing against people who actually like it, but, you know. Anyway, gonna have to, what the heck is Slurp? Yeah. Hey, I mean, we're this far, I might, I might as well actually see what they have to say about the topic anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. So, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my film theory reaction. And if you have any suggestions for future stuff for me to react to, you can of course leave it in the comment section below, or you can head over to my Discord server and go to the actual, like, suggestion channel for reactions. Just, you know, for future reference. But yeah, I guess with all that out of the way, let's get this thing actually started then, shall we? If there's one thing we all know about Fortnite, it's that they love their character crossover events. Usually oh, we yes. get typically strong, muscular heroes like Goku, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or John Wick. So I think we can all agree we were a little surprised when we saw this. Right, Peter Griffin. Buff. Peter Griffin. What was even more surprising was his method on achieving this physique. A single jar of slurp juice, one of Fortnite's most iconic items. But the craziest part of all of this, the science might actually be possible. So are you saying that instead of like slurp just being like radioactive, even more radioactive Red Bull, um, it's like steroids? <laughs> But yeah, I just, I completely, I granted, I mean, like, I remember it it being, like, such the big thing when, like, Peter was announced for it being in Fortnite, because I know for a, the longest time that was the meme. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that slurps down video games in the name of science. That's right, folks. After almost three years, Game Theory is hopping off that battle bus and dropping back into the world of Fortnite. And really what, dear theorists, has years. forced me to return to this massive series after so long? Was it the ever-growing and convoluted lore? Was it the seemingly infinite list of microtransactions? No, it was that in Chapter 5, Season 1, they added Peter freaking Griffin. And this yeah, Peter so is putting the weird. cut in cut away gags. Now, this isn't without explanation. In the video announcing his addition to the game, we see Peter at the doctor's office getting a physical from Fortnite's resident swell cat, Meowsicles. Meowsicles? How is that word pronounced? Oh no. <laughs> getting a physical from Fortnite's resident swell cat, Meowsicles. Peter makes it quite Meowsicles. clear that he's trying to get jacked, but he's not actually willing to put in any work. So instead, course, Meowsicles decides to give Peter a jar of something and boom, instant muscles. What was in that jar that helped Peter go from family guy to fitness bro? None other than Fortnite's iconic slurp juice. This slurp Expired was a consumable item in Fortnite that used to heal quite a bit of health back in the day. It was created by Slurpco in the aptly named Slurpy Swamp. Over the years, Slurp Juice has been added and removed and added again, but it still remains one of Fortnite's most iconic and beloved items. But the only thing I could think of when I saw Peter down that juice is, could something like this actually exist? I mean, Slurp Juice seems to pack a pretty powerful punch. Not only does it heal all wounds, but it also can turn Peter Griffin into Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Could it just oh God, don't put that in my mind. your muscles without you having to lift a finger? The answer, as it turns out, is an unequivocal yes. After hours of research, I think I may have discovered what? the secret ingredient that makes slurp juice so slurpy. And it's something that you might find in your local pharmacy sooner than you'd think. Grab your mason jars and juice presses, loyal theorists. It's time to squeeze every bit of science out of this six-year-old item. To kickstart our slurpy investigation, okay. I of course turn to the game itself. Does it give us any indication of what slurp juice might be? It does. But not in the Battle Royale. Instead, the answer actually comes from the newest addition to the Fortnite family, Lego Fortnite. Lego Fortnite is a- Again, 
weirdest crossover. I just... I mean, like... At this point, Fortnite is just trying to compete with Steam. Whatever is popular over there, just make a Fortnite version of it. It is, it is so weird. Open world survival crafting game that converts everything into the lovable Lego brick style. Huh, I wonder how Mojang feels about that. Anyway, yeah, because yeah. of that crafting, Lego Fortnite allows you to take raw ingredients and turn them into consumable items, including slurp juice, which only requires two simple ingredients, raspberries and slurp mushrooms. There you have it. Theory over. We figured out what slurp juice is. But obviously we're not done. Because while we have the but ingredients, what's we need to see mushroom. whether they will actually achieve what the game suggests. So it's time for some good old-fashioned food science. For starters, raspberries are... Uh, what do you think you're doing? Oh... Uh. It's Santi. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm about to explain the science of a video game item. What it looks like you're doing is trying to steal my thing. I'm the food theory guy. <sighs> yeah, but he's now the game guy, and we're talking about a video game item here. Get back in your lane. You deal with real life stuff. Tell you what, why don't you tell the audience about the nutritional value of raspberries and mushrooms, and I'll chime in to talk about how it helps us solve our in-game mystery. You mean like, work together? <sighs> I guess I could give that a try. <sighs> this was oh, this was what I was afraid of. When you have multiple personalities on multiple channels, you're and you're inevitably going to have them start fighting. This is why I, this is why I didn't want Matt Pat to leave. <laughs> <clears throat> Raspberries are actually a great ingredient to have in an athlete's juice. They're an excellent source of complex carbohydrates, supplying your body with a sustained energy source. Raspberries also contain beta carotene, which can improve eyesight. So with raspberries, a player can push for longer while also no scoping the competition. Exactly. Raspberries Raspberries are also chock full of antioxidants like vitamin C and E. You see, every yeah, time you breathe, your body stuff. produces what are known as free radicals. Free radicals end up damaging your DNA and tissues. Antioxidants are able to neutralize those free radicals. So if a person is running around an island trying to survive, they would produce a lot of free radicals, right? But the antioxidants in the raspberries would help to heal them from those effects. So what you're saying is that raspberries are jailed radicals. I'm sorry, I'll stop now. So to speak. Now you're cooking. Mushrooms are another ingredient that athletes have been gravitating to lately. They're low in calories, they contain minerals like potassium and magnesium that help muscle function, and they're a pretty decent source of protein. If you're looking for a non-meat alternative for muscle growth, you could do a lot worse than mushrooms. Plenty of companies even sell mushroom powders you mix with your coffees, shakes, and of course juices. One great example is the cordyceps fungus. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that what causes the zombie outbreak in the last <laughs> bus? Well, yeah, yes. that kind of took it does what? share the same name, but it doesn't quite work that way in real life. Cordyceps have been in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries, but more modern science research has shown that along with the muscle building properties, cordyceps can boost exercise performance and fight inflammation. All in all, I think that having a raspberry and mushroom juice could end up being the perfect combination for a nice post-workout drink. Wow, I guess Fortnite really was onto something. Maybe this episode is just that simple. Wait, did you say post-workout? Yeah, I mean, you can drink all the nutritious stuff you want, but you're not going to gain any muscle mass or improve your fitness without working on at least a there's the but rub that's exactly isn't exactly what happens peter rejects the 30 day and even the one hour workout plan which means while raspberries and mushrooms sound like a perfect fit we need something that's going to work without having to exercise so all the research i just did was totally useless no, of course useless actually yeah kind of okay well maybe he's just hallucinating you can turn magic mushrooms into a psychedelic juice with a suspiciously light blue color that looks just like slurp juice are you seriously suggesting that i go with it was all a dream <sighs> i uh, yeah i guess you're right well yeah. at least i got to do one of my other favorite things waste your time Bye! Ugh, that guy. According to the game, slurp juice contains, quote, 1% juice. And according to the FDA, juice is defined as the aqueous liquid expressed or extracted from one or more fruits or vegetables. So, raspberries and mushrooms are likely part of this concoction, but what on earth is the other 99%? Okay, so what you're basically saying is that slurp juice um, is actually illegal. Because I would believe that would kind of fall under the same category of like, uh, you see a lot of like candies and stuff like that where they say they're chocolate-y, not that they're chocolate. Because, oh god, there was, a, there was a food theory talking about this. I'm forgetting there's like a certain percentage of like, like chocolate, like ingredients that you need to have in the chocolate 
to have it classify as actual chocolate. Did from one or more fruits or vegetables. So raspberries and mushrooms are likely part of this concoction, but what on earth is the other 99%? Well, one small detail you might have seen during chapter two are these tanker trucks around the map. These are filled with slurp juice and most players just destroy them in order to get the healing effects of the slurp. But before you smash the truck to bits, if you pay close attention, you'd see this little placard on the side of the truck that says radioactive material. What did I say? <laughs> I specifically said that Slurp Juice was the even more radioactive, like, inbred cousin of, like, of, like, uh, what was it, Monster Energy? Or Red Bull, no, that was Red Bull. I mean, all those energy drinks are the same, but you know. <laughs> the idea that Slurp Co. would secretly be adding radioactive ingredients to their drinks does sound like the kind of thing an evil corporation would do. Especially course, as we're covering course. it here on this channel. But the funny thing yeah. is, there are actually some real world examples of companies doing exactly this. Making their products radioactive. No, I'm not kidding. In the early 20th century, radioactivity had only recently been discovered. We're still decades away from understanding the long-term health effects of radiation exposure. Exposure. All people really knew is that it contained a whole bunch of energy and that it glowed. So, yeah, well, I mean, that was, I mean, before they really knew, like, how bad it was. Of course, you had, like, the ra uh, watches that their glow in the dark with uh, paint was made out of radium. I mean, if you've ever heard of the Radium Girls, I mean, you don't have to look that far to see what kind of damages it did to them because they were licking their um their paintbrushes to have the paint the tip fine so that they could paint all the little like the fine details on the watch i mean like of course it's easy to say oh my and they were such idiots back then but i mean they literally hadn't discovered the ill effects yet so uh Naturally, companies started shoving radioactive elements like radium and thorium into anything they could think of, like makeup, toothpaste, and even suppositories. Then they marketed them as boosting energy, giving you a youthful glow, and <clears throat> improving your performance. But as you can probably yeah, of course, guess, of course. that isn't what happened. One of the most documented examples of this radioactive craze was for a product called Radathor. It was an energy drink that was basically radioactive, radioactive radium water, mixed with, yeah. quote, triple distilled water. Oh good, wouldn't want any of those pesky impurities getting in my radioactive drink now would we but one man yeah. was a big fan businessman and semi-professional golfer Eben Byers in 1927 Byers hurt his arm after falling off a train bunk his doctors ended up prescribing him Radathor oh did I forget to mention this stuff wasn't just an old school gamer drink it was literally being prescribed as medicine yeah it was the old-fashioned cure-all <laughs> Byers said it made him feel toned up and would go on to drink an average of two to three bottles of Radathor a day for three years. Until, of course, it all came crashing down. Of Turns course, out that of toned up feeling was really his body falling apart, literally. By 1931, he started to lose weight, his bones became brittle, his teeth fell out, holes started to form in his skull, and eventually most of his bottom jaw had to be removed. He died in 1932 of multiple cancers just five years after his first dose of Radathor. Thor, and then he had to be buried in a lead-lined coffin. Over three decades later, when his body was dug up for research, his corpse was still considered dangerously radioactive and likely will remain so forever. It was only after this and a few other tragedies that the FDA started cracking down and began regulating most radiation out of everyday products. <laughs> radiation is dangerous stuff. Duh, and outside yeah. of niche medical applications like imaging and destroying cancer, radiation serves absolutely no medical benefit whatsoever. While it may be cool to think that the radioactive ingredients in slurp juice could turn Peter Griffin into the Incredible Hulk, radiation doesn't really work like it does in the comics. No, it's less no, it Bruce not. Banner and more Evan Byers. And actually, if you take a second look at those radioactive placards, you'll notice something. The lettering on those placards is old and worn. It seems to me that these trucks used to contain radioactive material, but were bought and rebranded by Slurp Co. somewhere down the line, which is why you can see other lettering peeking out from underneath the big, beautiful Slurp logo. And it makes sense. I mean, none of their products are actively advertising the radioactive effects like the products from the 1900s. And if they were trying to be sneaky about it, you'd think they'd cover up the radioactive material sign on the side of their company trucks. That, tied with the lack of missing jaws from our battle royales, and I think we can definitively say that Slurp Juice does not contain radioactive material. I mean, that being said, the average lifespan of, you know, one of the people fighting in Fortnite isn't that long, to be extremely honest. I mean, 
not a, apart from like the giant storm that's uh, that is actively shrinking that if you step outside the eye of you begin just slowly dying which actually thinking that might itself be like radioactive okay so if the game is no help what real world science is there that can help us to create this beautiful blue slurp i guess the first question really is how and why do muscles actually get bigger when you do any sort of strenuous activity your brain sets off a cascade of metabolic processes across your body it activates different genes to specifically protect you from the stresses of working out for example when you lift weights your body starts funneling your blood towards the muscles and away from other parts of your body that aren't critical at that very moment like your digestive system after you're done pumping iron you'll notice you feel a bit sore that's because you've depleted your body of its critical nutrients and worked your muscles so hard that you've technically damaged them your body well, then the reacts thing. by repairing the damaged muscles but this time making them even stronger than before o over time if you continue to work out that same muscle it will eventually become jacked so building muscle means you are also healing said muscles therefore if we can focus on finding something that helps build muscle we should get the healing factor thrown in as a two for one my first instinct was performance enhancing drugs or peds drugs like anabolic steroids allow athletes to illegally get swole fast they do this by yeah. mimicking naturally occurring hormones in our body like testosterone testosterone increases the production of muscle proteins hence muscle growth and increased strength it's not all illegal though anabolic steroids can be used to help people recover from both muscle and bone injuries strengthening them in the process Plus, one of the side effects of steroid use is, quote, delusional feelings of being superhuman or invincible. And if you take a look at Peter Griffin, I think that fits the bell quite nicely. Egg well, I mean, I mean, you don't really have to add that. That's just Peter Griffin in a nutshell. <laughs> Except when you then look at the other side effects. One of the long-term side effects of using steroid is muscle tremors, which isn't something you really want when you need to aim accurately to take home the victory. But there are also some more visually obvious side effects. Things like hair loss, severe acne, and damage to your liver and kidneys, which can lead to things like jaundice, making your skin turn yellow. That is not the what Simpsons we see are Peter. All he looks like the Greek Adonis, and our <laughs> other Fortnite characters aren't looking bad either. And given how much these players are consuming during a game, it doesn't seem like these side effects are kicking in, which means it's likely not steroid use which therefore means i have to keep looking naturally i turn course, to the more natural option for bodybuilders creatine this is typically found in things like fish and red meat instead of mimicking hormones creatine goes straight to your skeletal muscles and is converted into creatine phosphate which then helps with the creation of adenosine triphosphate an energy source for your cells basically it allows you to exercise for longer therefore helping you build muscle faster and helping to speed up the recovery of those muscles not to mention that it's currently being studied to see if it can potentially treat things like congestive heart failure parkinson's and fibromyalgia Alger. So the healing factor is definitely awesome. Awesome. Finally, creatine is typically sold in a powdered form, which makes it easy for Slurp Co to sneak it into your juice. It seems like we have a winner, especially with the lack of negative side effects, mm, but it's still not a perfect fit. Both creatine and steroids run into the same problem we did earlier. Much like the nutritious juice that Santi laid out for us, these things don't work without putting in some level of effort. And it was at this point that I was basically ready to give up. There just didn't seem to be any way to grow your muscles without putting in the work. Epic Games had specifically designed the most un scientific item possible and so my couch potato dreams were shattered and i was this close to binning the Dread. entire episode that was until i found this. At the end of last year, a group of scientists led by Dr. Thomas P. Burris from the University of Florida announced some promising results on an experimental new drug. This drug is part of a class of compounds called exercise mimetics. Basically, these are compounds that mimic the effect of exercise without having to exercise. How does it work? Well, earlier we mentioned that when you exercise, your body activates different genes. That happens because those yeah. genes have receptors that bind to different proteins. One of those receptors is known as an estrogen-related receptor, or ERR. Fun fact, has nothing to do with estrogen in the hormone the more you know i guess but when you exercise your body releases a protein called pgc1 alpha and that binds to a lot of receptors in your body including err which then stimulates the production of skeletal muscle fibers however pgc1 alpha isn't specifically meant for err in fact no protein is which is where this new drug comes in it was designed specifically to bind to those estrogen related receptors in place of pgc1 alpha activating the genes to produce skeletal muscle fibers and therefore tricking your body into thinking the muscles are damaged and need repairing and so building muscle all without having to leave your chair during trials on mice they found that it was actually 50 times more effective than traditional training with those given the new drug being able to run 50 percent further than those who weren't considering that a player needs to run for miles in a 20 minute game that sounds like it would be pretty useful you know what else the scientists found during the experiment outside of the increased muscles and healing properties an increase in grip strength which when you remember that a player needs to paraglide all the way from the battle bus to the island 
seems like a critical advantage. And what's great about yeah. all of this so far is that scientists haven't noticed any long-lasting negative side effects. It's also- I'm gonna guess that the caveat is yet. You never- with stuff like this, I would imagine especially with stuff like this, these, requ these would require very long-term human trials to see you know, because as I said, I mean, the damages that steroids can do, it, like, but that's the damages that steroids can do aren't instant. I mean, they happen after a little while, but something like this, it might be, you know, longer. Hmm. It's worth noting that the university doing these experiments is the same university that made another sports beverage innovation back in the 1960s. They created a sports drink that provided electrolytes and other nutrients to help Gatorade. aid the performance of their football team, the Gators. Of course, this drink would then go on to be known as Gatorade, famous for its bright colors, including blue. And if you take a look at the original bottle, it does look an awful lot like Slurp Juice, doesn't it? But the I mean, not really. I mean, the Slurp Juice stuff looks more like like a mason jar almost just like a fan this with a slightly fancier shape to it absolute cherry on top of all of this is the drug's name yossi drum roll please come on man this is this is my first one like can we maybe just put a bit of effort into this please i'll bring you chocolate from the uk please Thank you. The name of this drug is SLUPP332. I mean, you see it, right? Come on. It's basically one line away from just being called Slurp. Editor, can we fix that in post? Thank you. So, there you have really? it. We have found the true recipe for Slurp juice. 1% mushroom and raspberry juice, maybe a dash of blue coloring to make it feel like a healthy sports drink, and the rest is all SLUPP332. An experimental drug designed to help you gain muscle without lifting a finger. Perfect for people like me stuck behind a desk all day writing theories. Of course, right now, you can't just go out and buy slurp. It's still very much in the early testing phase. It needs to be trialed and refined before it ever gets into a person's body. Because while early results show that it doesn't have long-term side effects in mice, even that only looks at the effects after a month or so. Who's to say that taking the drug for longer or when it's trialed on humans doesn't cause some kind of unforeseen side effects? Exactly. Literally what I was just talking about. However, this clearly hasn't stopped Slurp Co. from releasing the product anyway. That's why, unlike other juices that you find in the game like Slap Juice, and guzzle juice, which come in more traditional consumer packaging like we see in our world, slurp juice comes in an unlabeled mason jar. It's the kind of jar you'd buy at a craft store, not the one you'd use to mass market <laughs> a product. All those labels you see on food and medicines, that has to be there as part the of the FDA. Food and Drug Administration's approval process to let you know what the side effects and health risks are for anything you're consuming. But we don't know the side effects of slurp juice, which would be an immediate red flag for the FDA. And that is why it's given out in unlabeled mason jars. We're being told it's just raspberry and mushroom juice that will give you a little extra boost to keep fighting when in reality our players are a series of guinea pigs testing out a brand new experimental drug without any approval completely ignorant to any potential slurpy side effects and considering the fact that slurp juice has been removed from the game time and time again my guess is they either got found out or those trials didn't go so well maybe i'll yeah. just talk to the gym. but hey that's just a theory a game theory thanks for watching Again, it never ceases to amaze me that you have these, like, the items, that you have these, like, items from video games. It, like, we find something that could very, very realistically mimic the effect of the item. It's just, it's, it's like, it's absolutely nuts. It, it truly is. It, it really makes you wonder which, it's like, it's, it, it really is a chicken or the egg situation here. Like, were they working on this research and then somebody on the game dev team heard about this like through the grapevine or something and then put it into the game or did they put it into the game and then the people who you know actually discovered this then kind of oh this is sort of like this and then so they just kind of like used parts of the name it's it is it's really weird and funny oh absolutely love it and yeah, with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.